right, we're in tune here. What's up, everybody? We're going to get right into it. So uh, we did a lesson on the bluegrass G, and it's called a bunch of things. It's pretty much just a different finger positioning for the open G chord. So you normally play it like this. When I grew up, we called them cowboy chords. Now that I know music theory, I know they're called open chords. Uh, most people just call them the chords you play because that's the most common one. <laughs> but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how when you're playing solos and leads, you really don't want to have your fingers bunched up like this. You want to have them separated like this where each finger has its own designated fret. So I'll show you an example of if we were playing the uh, C major scale here, I wouldn't just use one finger and be here or use things and be sliding around. Each finger would get its own usage. So I would do C, D, E, X, F, G, A, B, C. So anytime that there was a note hit on the first fret, I used my pointer. On the second fret, I used my middle. On the third fret, I used my ring. On the fourth, I used my pinky. And we would do that. So let's show the G scale. So, and I'm just doing them quick so you can see them. We'll go over it all slower. I'm just kind of giving you a quick overview. So for this, it would be G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So we kept our fingers over the correct spots. And so when we're playing a G chord like this, if we need to go directly into the um, G scale and we try and play, we're already off. That should be played with this finger here. So all we're going to do is we're going to switch from playing like this to playing like this. So this pointer finger will stay open and look, it can hit right in there in that first. And when we're ready, our pinky's available for the fourth. So that's all we're going to do. So it's in a short minute and two minute video in the channel, but uh, this live stream will kind of go over it unedited. I want you to see it in real time, just how I do it. Um, yeah, and we'll rock out. Uh, if you check out the links below, there's a bunch of free ones of the circle of fifths, which will explain um, how many sharps are in a or are in a key when you're playing a uh, a scale here. So, like the key of C, the C scale doesn't have any sharps or flats. It's just C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and back to C. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and back to C. On the circle of fifths, you'll notice that's at the top. Then if you go one to the right, that's G, the next one, and that's going to have one sharp. So we would do G, A, B, C, D, E. The only sharp is an F sharp, so we do F sharp, G. Um, and then if you go one more to the right, we just add a sharp every time. So now it's two sharps, and that's going to be the uh, D. And the two sharps are C sharp and F sharp. So we would do D. F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. And then you can continue that all the way down. It's just going to add a sharp each time. Um, so let's go into the actual thing we're doing here, which is making the G chord. So this is what it's going to look like. And so I'll explain it here. So instead of having our middle finger on the sixth string, and remember, we always count from the ground up. So the first string is the one closest to the floor. The sixth string is the one closest to our face. So on the sixth string with our uh, ring finger, we're on the third fret. Then on the second fret, uh, fifth string, we have our middle finger. Then on the first string, third fret, we have our pinky. So we're hitting the same notes and we just got our pointer finger up there, but notice at any point, if we need to play a solo, we're available right there to play. So I called it the bluegrass G in the video earlier because uh, if you play bluegrass, which is awesome and uh, one of the best guitar skill sets out there, check out Billy Strings if you don't know him, he's incredible. Um, when you're playing, you can't, you have, there's no time for downtime. Uh, it's super fast, it's super rhythmic, and you just have to be ready to go. So when you're all bunched up with this, it's just not as free and open. That's not a bad you know, thing to play, and if, if the song's right, you can use that. But when you need to be able to solo and be open and ready, this is the one you use. Um, but it's also applicable to other music. You can use it in rock or pop or country or whatever. I really like the band Ween. Got to see them out of, or got to see them out at Red Rocks. 
saw him at Riot Fest one year, um, probably a couple other times that maybe I don't remember. Um, they also do one, um, it's called Don't Shit Where You Eat, and it's an incredible song. So I'm going to play that right now and show you how this G chord that we're learning now will let you play songs like that. And it's, this is a super basic uh, concept, but it lets you see it. They do really easy and beautiful music. It's very, uh, it's very pleasing to listen to, but it's not rocket science, as I like to say. So let's start in the G here. And I'm going to play you a little sample of what that sounds like, and then we'll go over why they do it. And you can watch my hand as I do this and see, and you'll kind of see how it makes sense. And the song continues from there, but that's the example that we need to look at. So did you notice how when I was playing that little riff to start the G and then so on, that was all done with my ring finger. And if I had my hands up here, it already gets metal. Look, like it's just kind of in the way. And now I need to play a C. So the next thing I do, I just switch my hand position. Now watch if I did it like this. Now let's look at the old way. Oops, sorry. See how you have to do that switch? It's not end of the world. You can totally make it happen. The song's not like Flight of the Bumblebee or anything, but you do need to make it happen. And just having the least excessive movement that you can is what you want. So I guess in easier terms, do less. Well, now you're doing nothing. You got to do something. Just... Just imagine you're trying to be as effortless as possible. And if you uh, picture anyone at the that's great at a sport or great at any sort of activity, it usually looks effortless. And that's what we're trying to do. So we're not trying to make it super jolty, you know, nice and easy. As opposed to... And see, that that's subtle. It's nothing crazy, but it'll make you so much better over the long run. And this is just one example. So... Um, we can also go, let's go back to bluegrass, my original example. Um, if you're doing bluegrass licks, um, if you're kind of bunched up here, and then I'm about to hit, so the riff that you would hit is, and again, I can achieve it, it's not impossible, but it's just not perfect to practice, and I recommend doing both ways, but especially what I'm about to show you. When I did this, I hit the G right here, that sixth string, third fret, then I hit open, on the fifth string, and then I went to the fifth string, first fret, and over. But I kind of did extra work. If I was right here, I'm already over it. And I know it seems incremental, but it's just huge in the long run. And getting to do these little um, tips and tricks and foundations down will just make you a much better player. And that bluegrass G, or just another way to play an open G, will make you a lot better player. So use it in your daily activities. And even when I'm playing it, sometimes I'll play the old one. It's not end of the world. But having that in your repertoire is huge. And if you go through our channel, we got a whole free year of lessons. Um, you'll, you'll see that it's definitely worth practicing keeping your hands on the correct designated frets. Um, once we start doing things like soloing, and we get to scales, like if we move up here, we do a C scale. It's only achieved well if we keep our fingers on the designated spots. There are certain times where we move it, but I'm not going crazy out of the pocket, just nice and easy. And if you're all bunched up and tight doing the wrong things, it's not gonna sound good. So just make sure you're playing these correctly. And uh, I think the biggest thing is just being open to new things. So at first, it's going to feel a little weird, but it makes the same beautiful sound. So check it out. Leave a comment below. Um, check out our merch store also. We've got some great hats. I'm a big fisherman. Um, this channel is going to merge into a fishing channel, so I'm just kind of getting started on our content here. Guitar is my second passion. I am a fisherman at heart. 
living out here in Colorado. So we'll continue the streams. We'll continue the content. Um, yeah, I'll see you all soon. Till next time. Later. Oops.